Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, March 15th, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Any of you that are having issues uh, accessing the recorded calls, Reboot your machine, your computer, change your browser, remove, you know, eliminate your cookies, and see if that works, because it's not us. And if need be, you can contact your carrier uh, or the customer service at Free Conference HD so, and find out uh, what's afoot if somebody, if, if there is some element that's doing this intentionally, and we'll get the bottom of that. So just a heads up for everybody. We'll be having a time for change call tonight. It's going to be a real humdinger, gobsmacker, at roughly around 9 p.m. Eastern. How do we let the universe love us? Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it, Rumi. Whether we know it or not, our being, our being, we are being loved right now. This universe loves us deeply and eternally. It accepts us exactly the way we are, right in this very moment. It doesn't pay attention to our fears, flaws, and insecurities. It only sees perfection in us because we are an intimate part of it. No matter what horrific things that you may have done or said in your past or any lifetime, this universe is not holding on to them. It has already forgiven you. In fact, it forgave you the very moment you felt bad about it. This universe cannot judge you, condemn you, or view you as someone less than holy. It accepts you as a perfect divine aspect of itself, a sacred extension of the very heart of creation. Those things which we consider unacceptable or unlovable about ourselves are simply very small contracted thoughts and have no real substance to them. The only real substance is love, which is inside the heart, beyond the mind, is infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. To get to this real place of universal love, we must choose to get beyond the societal mind, which is how we generally feel about ourselves. The way we view ourselves is usually based on how we believe the people we are the most intimate with feel about us. This world is our multidimensional mirror. And our closest friends and family are mere extensions of ourselves. If and when we feel that our friends and family despise us, then we will be constantly judging and hating ourselves. If and when we believe everyone loves us deeply, and eternally, just as we are, we will have an acceptance and appreciation of who we are. The interesting thing here is that our minds hold the key to whether we believe that others love us, fear us, or hate us. In our minds, we make the final decision 
on how this world treats us. If and when we believe it in our hearts, we can manifest it. And the deepest reality is all up to us. We must think of ourselves as a metaphysical radio tower. Beyond physical, meta means beyond, beyond physical, radio tower. Who is continuously broadcasting and receiving messages within a living, breathing universe of which we are all an intimate part. What are the messages we are sending out most of the time? What are the messages we are receiving? Look for the direct correlation between the two. What are we putting out and what are we getting back? When we are practicing being appreciating, accepting, and approving of ourselves just as we are, we are opening up the receptors in our hearts and brains to receive that same loving signal back from anyone around us. The more sensitive we become to this love, we will start to sense a constant flow of universal goodness that is pouring into us, into the plants, animals, and is emanating from everyone and anything. Love is possible only when there is a deep acceptance of oneself, the other, the world. Acceptance creates the melu in which love grows, the soul in which love blooms, Osho. The big journey is to discover this blissful state. It is learning how to stop seeking love, acceptance, and approval from this outer world and start relaxing, softening, and letting it bubble up from the infinite source within. When we stop focusing on our thoughts, Love naturally becomes our guide. We, we end the cycle of manifesting the perpetual state of drama, the thinking habit was created for us. We end the cycle of manifesting the perpetual state of drama, the thinking habit, that was created for us. Once we are aware that our thoughts are constantly repeating themselves like a broken record, once we are aware that our thoughts are constantly repeating themselves like a broken record, without buying into their drama, we can take an even deeper look inside, into the source of thought itself. The very moment, an instant, we discover where the source of thought is coming from, the mind completely stops, and we become truly free. Take a moment to realize how intangible and fleeting our thoughts actually are. One second one is there. Another moment, a completely new one has arrived. They come and go as quickly as you can blink. Watch how fast they come and go. Soon you will start to see how little power these thoughts have over you. And spend more time tuning into the vast loving presence of your being. You will become so sensitive to your own presence that you can feel the source of love from the universe pouring through you everywhere you go. In the city, in the forest, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the bathroom, you will know without a doubt that the loving universal energy is always 
always, always within you, right here, right now. The spiritual journey is for those who are interested in knowing who they truly are, examining everything within. If anybody looks long enough, they will find that deep inside at the very core of their being. It is a vital spiritual energy that is continuously and joyfully supporting our lives. It is pulsating with love, laughter, and bliss. It gives us every creative feeling and experience that we have of life. It is constantly bringing a pure conscious awareness into our minds and allows our breath to flow in and out on its own accord. This amazing energy is the real source of us. We can call it divine energy, life force, prana, chi, or simply the loving being that we are. This source of love is pure, real, and it never, ever, ever, ever stops flowing. The only reason we do not notice or feel it is because we were paying too much attention to our minds. We were caught in the ideas happening between our ears in the neuronal web of the mind's matrix wrapped up in thinking, pondering, planning, and scheming about our lives. The moment we unhook ourselves, from the head and drop into the heart. We free ourselves from the internal busyness and discover a deep, peaceful stillness that brings everything into perfect perspective. Like rain pouring down from the sky, the universe is showering tons of love upon us in each moment. Yet we can only start feeling it when we are truly vulnerable, open, and willing to feel anything. The good, the bad, and the crazy feelings that we are sitting on. Then that little voice inside you that always doubts, resists, and tries to control your life on every level will take a mini vacation. Hallelujah. We will begin to automatically feel the love. This depends on our ability to open up our hearts, be vulnerable, and consciously drop our resistance to love. Hold the intention solid. And you can instantly start receiving this divine love right now. Now, if and when we try too hard to accept, approve, and give loving appreciation to ourselves, we will not be relaxing into it and we'll be missing the point of it. This infinite love is constantly bubbling naturally from within us. It comes effortlessly through us when we simply let go of trying to attain it through some person, place, or thing. By letting go of the ego's perpetual desiring search for more, better, or faster, just for a few moments, we start surrendering to the ease and joy of trusting this love that is here now. This trust instantly shifts our vibration and we become even more receptive and grounded in this divine love from this universe. 
just as the sun selflessly shines its light on every life from here, every life form here on earth, the same goes for the spiritual love. It is always shining onto us, everyone around us, and it is infinitely available. The hard, struggling approach of life, this life, is not the reason why we came to earth. It is a learned pattern of thinking we inherited from someone in our past who was challenged by life and were energetically close to us. Usually the main roots are from our parents, yet all the people that we were emotionally intimate with in our lives taught us how to doubt, resist, and be afraid of certain things. Remember, we were programmed, all of us, by other people's thoughts. So these thoughts, these people, and it's not like they did it on purpose. It's, so it's, it isn't really a negative. It's just it is, it's a cycle that needs to be shifted and changed. So remember, you were taught, we were all taught, because we didn't have it. it wasn't there. We were all taught on how to doubt, resist, and be afraid of certain things. Go ahead and take this moment to thank them all. Without their fear-based thinking patterns, we would not experience so much growth happening. The plants that go without fertilizer rarely produce the best fruit. It all depends on what is inside the soul. To transcend this limiting mindset inside of us, simply relax. Be very still for 20 minutes. Feel the joy of pure being. Happiness is like a butterfly. The more you chase, the more subtle. But if you stop moving and quietly wait for it to land on you, Nathaniel Hawthorne, if it is hard for you to believe that this universe truly loves you, Look at everything you have manifested around you. For years, this universe has been providing you with everything you need to remain alive. It's given us all the food, shelter, air, water, and keeps our heart pumping 24 hours a day. When we recognize and feel that this universe is always sharing all these amazing goodies with us, it becomes much harder to live a life filled with fear. I mean, we can trust that life is flowing to us, through us, for us, and is happy to give us this love so we can let go, relax inside, and simply practice receiving Practice knowing that this universe enjoys keeping us safe, alive, warm, and super cozy. Everywhere we are. Allow, we should allow ourselves to relax. Imagine this great warmth bubbling up from deep inside you. This gives the conscious, intelligent universe permission to assist you even more in whatever way you need it. You simply have to be open to receive it and truly let in the love. When you let go of trying to improve yourself, fix yourself, and simply realize just how sweet, innocent, and lovable you truly are, then the universe has no choice but to send you loving people, experiences, and messages. This is the time when your life becomes a constant meandering river 
of bliss. You become a love magnet for the best, most loving experiences when you are accepting yourself with love, appreciation all day long, you can manifest anything you want with effortless ease. Self-acceptance is the greatest thing you can do to grow very quickly in consciousness and abundance. It will transform you in more ways than you know. There is so much love available to you right now just slow down relax about your life and be open to it this is the only way you can receive it fully with slowing down into a state of constant self-acceptance you will make it through this spiritual birth canal and truly enjoy this long, amazing ride. We are, remember this, we are infinite beings. You can feel that on the surface superficially, right? But what about deeply? To focus on that, that you are a omnipotently powerful, supreme, divine being, super manifesting, that does not die. It's a big difference when you look at the body. Big difference. And it is, it's, it's, it's up to each and every one of us. No one, nobody, nothing is going to force you to go within. You will make that decision. Only you. And of course, ego mind comes in and says, well, then you got to go tell people, brag about it. Yeah, I've, I've decided to go within and stay within. And then when we look at all of the things that pull us, right? The ego mind comes in and throws in all these thoughts and every, it's like every millisecond of thoughts, just boom, 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 boom. And then you're kicked back and you're saying, that's an ego thought, that's an ego thought, that's an ego thought. Most of them are, by the way. You know that? Most of the thoughts are ego thoughts, ego mind thoughts. They always involve stress, lack, worry, insecurity, fear. That's what they always contain. Come in, you feel them, you know, you know and it's, if you embrace them, that's, then you, you, they become a reality for you. The suggestion is, is that when they do come in, you identify them, you say you don't care to have any interaction with that thought, then immediately bring in your thought, right? Have your thought form come in and then be dispersed. You get in the habit of doing that, then it counteracts these ego mind thoughts. You shot, you, can you see how empowering that is that you, you identify the ego mind thoughts and through heart-mindedness you say, I'm not interested in engaging in that. And it passes by. It just, shh, gone. And of course, one after the other, cup, cup popping in. And you do the same thing. Now once in a while, a thought will come in and go, hey, I like this one. I'm going to bring this into energy, into form. And I'm going to experience it. Okay? But remember, we are always creating things that we don't realize we're creating and bringing into our lives. We don't know.
Why is that? Well, we make things a little spicy at times so that we're not bored. Because if every, it's like I've said before, if everything that we put out, we know exactly what's going to, how it's going to form, when it's going to come to us, what will it contain, and we knew every single time. I think we would all agree it's boring for us in these bodies. And when people sit and they say, they're bored, right? You know why they're bored? Because they have no clue about embracing their spiritual, the God within them. They have no clue. That's why they're bored, because... They're constantly engaged in the material physical world, which can become so redundant after a period of time and really boring. So we always see, do you, can you see it? Can you feel it? This is why we're always doing things. You ever notice this? We're always doing things. We're never not doing anything. We're always doing things. And then when we have an opportunity to just sit and be and not interested in engaging in anything outside of oneself, we get guilty. We feel guilty that we're not doing anything. In reality, we're doing a whole heck of a lot. And that's why so many of us live out in the exterior world and we get sucked into the rat race and then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you look to your right there's all these people and they're not looking around they're just heads are straight forward and they're just scurrying along as fast as they can you know speed walking if you will almost running they're on step None of them are bumping into each other, and they're all perfectly in step. They're all moving. They don't know where they're going. You're looking, and you're looking ahead, and you go, where the heck is everybody going? It seems like there's nothing there, and they're all running, almost running. Because we get sucked into that. Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm late, or oh, I, oh, I've got to be here a certain time. You rush, 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 rush in the morning. Rush, rush. Worst thing we could do to the soul is rush. Seriously. That's the worst thing we could do to the soul is rush. So then we make a concerted effort to just say, slow down. It's imperative. Slow down. Focus on your breath. Look into your eyes in that mirror and say how much you love, deeply love yourself. You do it every day, every night. Genuinely. You might feel a little weird about it, but you do it. Genuinely. And after a while, you, do, you will do it every single day. So powerful, and yet at the same time so ignorant to who and what we are. And it, it, you can you always you can tell that it's always being aware, aware that those are ego thoughts coming in, right? Aware that even by sitting and being, you're doing a lot. Going within, communicating with the God that you are. Having conversations with the God that you are. It's like you're sitting there saying, what, 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 what do you think, God? And this isn't the God that's outside of us. This is the God that you are.
When you look in that mirror and you look through those little tiny dark holes in our eyes, in the center of our eyes, Don't you ever wonder who's looking back at you? What is it that's looking back at you? Because something's looking back at you. What is that something? It's the God that you are. It's in that body. You'll see the spark in your own eyes. And every single step of the way, that we collectively, those of us who are somewhat aware, are transitioning this planet. Earth, Gaia, Arya. It shouldn't even be a secret. It shouldn't even be an unknown. And we're focused on the gods that we are in these bodies. More and more becoming focused on the gods we are in these bodies. And, you know, this universe, believe it or not, was intended for a playground for all of us. When you embrace the ego mind, you become cynical you become pessimistic, you become a doubting Thomas, you're in a lot of pain and suffering at times, you get very upset very easily, all those things. That's the ego mind. You'll come across other people that are smiling genuinely and happy because they know who and what they are. And you come across people that no matter what, that, you know, that you walk through life, this life, that they attract so many things. And you go, how did they do that? And then you say to yourself that you can't do that. Which is the ego mind trying to convince you that you're weak. And you're not. You're the opposite. And when more and more of us begin to embrace the gods that we are within these bodies, things are just going to be continually magical. Miracles will happen every split second on this planet. We will learn and understand that we're here to help each other. We help ourselves and we help each other. We build value, right? We create value and we build wealth for ourselves and the civilization. This is a constant. It's not temporary. We affect everybody and everything. Did you really think or believe that we would have we would allow this planet collectively to be no more? That's an emphatic no. We believe, and here's the true, the true gist of it. We're here to increase the vibrational frequencies of ourselves. And that's, at first, doesn't seem that way. But then eventually, you get the hang of it. You start understanding it. And you start embracing yourself, loving yourself, being gentle, kind, and generous with yourself at all times, and you stay in deep eternal gratitude at all times. Not when, you know, when things are kicking up outside of you, right? You, you say to yourself, and I'm not saying this is a piece of cake, right? So you start saying to yourself, I don't care to put my energies into these low frequencies. I don't really care to do that. What I care to do is focus on me, the God that I am in this body, and focus on my energies to continually increase in higher vibrat- vibrational frequency so it affects everyone around me. You ever seen those um, 
if, if you go up in the sky and you look down, it's at nighttime, and you see these beacons, right? Imagine that you are a beacon, and it's because of you going within yourself to discover the God you are and embrace the God that you are, immune with the God you are. These beacons, you can actually see like an orc field just expand out in circular waves. Each time it goes, beep, and it just floods everything for miles and miles and miles. And it's, it, it's flooding out like a golden pink-hued light, golden white pink-hued light. And it just, each time it beeps, it sends out a massive wave, 360 degrees. This is what we are. And the wave is filled with deep eternal love. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility. Benevolence. Love. It's filled with it. And you can see these beacons, because they're growing, throwing out this golden white pink light. These undulating waves of pure cosmic energy. Pure deep eternal love. Flooding everything. 360 degrees. You see more and more pop up. Yeah, You, you can just be kind of flying around the planet. And you see these and you watch as they flood out, permeate, saturate all things. And the doubt and fear, the anxiety and the stress, gone. Gone. The transcendence is into permanent peace, permanent tranquility, permanent joy, love, gratitude, which means all the time. Not, you know, not a shot here and a shot there. Not on occasion, but permanent. Doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter where you're sitting or what you're doing. You can embrace this 24-7. It's really, it is imperative, and you can feel that it's imperative. It's not a race. But we under, begin to understand is that what have we been doing all this time? Because we, we become aware of everything. And you say, what have we been doing? Oh, I've been, I was seduced by the evil mind. And I have been immersed in the physical material world my whole life. But now I've discovered and understand through meditation that I no longer choose to do that. I choose to go within and discover the God that I am. I choose so that everything I desire comes to me. I don't go to it. I'm not chasing because I have the confidence, faith, and trust in myself in this universe that it will come to me. And it will come to you in opportunities, different situations, and you can take your pick. Things will materialize. I mean, almost instantaneously for being and plugging into the God that you are and the universe that is you and everything else. Is you the universe and universe is you. This lack of, right? This lack of mentality that's been in, just burned into humanity will dissolve. You realize that everything's infinite. For all of us. So this this endless journey 
right now here we're on Earth and we're looking at things and experiencing things and you know we see things right and then we begin to realize that it's not real it isn't real and we in the poverty consciousness that we all have at times and we truly discover freedom from poverty consciousness it is an unbounded ecstatic highly energizing and emotionally liberating experience we begin to feel unstoppable on every level as if we've just won the jackpot everything comes to us when we move within you can't fake it you know you can't you just you try to fake it then you're going to be barking up the wrong tree See, when, when we are identified with our spiritual essence and that we never react in fear or worry, yet respond consciously to different challenges such as financial challenges with a positive loving trust, that miraculous outcomes are soon coming our way when we're truly in touch with our spiritual essence we become wise enough to see what's really going on inside our minds we know that the more energy and attention we put into those thoughts we don't want the more real and dominating they become the more often we practice allowing thoughts to float by untouched and unattached they eventually dissolve like clouds into the vast open blue sky when we can master this practice of watching we will eventually find that naturally effortlessly on its own accord we start seeing new financial possibilities in our financial future many different avenues a brand new creative canvas starts to form inside of us around us and we create an entirely different relationship with what money now understand money is gold and silver credit is everything else it's been that way for thousands of years money is gold and silver credit is everything else the process of freeing ourselves from all our hidden levels all the things all the things of poverty consciousness that contains a deep let go of all our self judgments about money how many times you heard that right root of all evil money will destroy you because they don't want you to have it and that's a programming the process of freeing ourselves from all of our hidden levels of poverty consciousness contains a deep let go of all of our self judgments about money these include all the deeper social and religious beliefs remember have you, you you I think you've all heard this in this lifetime in order to be a peaceful loving being you must be poor think about that now you must be poor who said that 
any real ecstasy is a sign that we are moving in the right direction. And don't let any prude tell you otherwise, St. Teresa of Avila. Everything comes to us. Now, okay, both sides of the coin, including the third. What does that mean? Well, good things come to you, so do bad things. You, know, you differentiate between the two. You know, sometimes we'll embrace the bad things. We'll move energy into form, create them into reality, and experience them. You can do a lot of things, but you don't know you can because the ego mind is so insecure. But when you get to the realization, understanding that you, the, the only journey that you have is within. And, you know, it's, there's no limitations. If you wanted to stop the wind, you could. Seriously. If you wanted to, let's say, increase the level of a lake water-wise, you could. In the event you wanted to increase your financial where wherewithal, right? You could. You want to have a healthy, supremely powerful body, physical body? You could. If you wanted blue skies and not rain for a period of time, you could. Do you see how we've been convinced to fight for everything, to crawl and wince and dig and pull and push oneself to the proverbial top? What is that? What is the proverbial top? Does anybody know? I think we all have different perspectives on that, right? Well, it's, uh, you know, achieving this, doing this, and getting to this point, and blah, 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 blah. When every single one of us, omnipotently powerful, by going within and finally discovering the gods that we are in these bodies, and, and watching the evil mind so that you end up mastering them, and leave them alone a lot, so that you can ascend. That's what it is. You're ascending through going within and increasing your vibrational frequencies exponentially. When you're mired on a planet that is literally flooding you with low frequency, what happens? Well, we witness it, don't we? Murder, death, kill. Greed, manipulation, power. It's so asinine and so silly that this goes on day in, day out, century after century, millennium after millennium. Think about it. Isn't it crazy? Instead of all of us coming together and, and of course, moving through all the things that have stymied us, surrendering, Right? Letting go, loving oneself intimately, divinely, permanently. See, it comes to that. Once the civilization gets to that understanding, there won't be murder, death, kill. There won't be greed, manipulation. There won't be dishonesty. There won't be the, 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 the need to be in charge and control and powerful. Because we all know that we're one and we're all of that and way beyond it. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close this out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose and then easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Who are you really? You are so much more than your role in this life. Who you are is not defined by what you do for a living or how nice of a car you're driving around town. It's too big to be defined by the kind of clothes you wear, nor by how many vacations you took last year. Your real nature cannot be defined by how good you are as a friend, companion, employee, spouse, or a friendly neighbor. In truth, who you truly are is beyond words. You are the vast, timeless, infinite consciousness that can never die. I invite you to look into the silent depth of your heart right now and explore, unveil, and discover your true infinite nature. Tonight is the beginning of an amazing new life. Let go, be happy, and be free. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our Time for Change call. And Thursday... March 16th, 2023, to continue our Global Guided Meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in deep gratitude with yourself at all times. <laughs>